It's been an honor for us to be the home of an IMAX theater for 36 years. We are thrilled to be upgrading our system to include a planetarium, and we can't wait for you to see it in the spring of 2019. We proudly announce the arrival of the intuitive planetarium at Huntsville. We have waited 37 years for this planetarium. We opened this theater as an IMAX theater in December of 1982. Well, thanks to Intuitive, we now have a planetarium. Hal, thank you so much. What an asset this is going to be. It, it just, it's amazed me. I, I will admit, you know, I was probably thinking a little simpler when we were talking a planetarium, uh, but this is just absolutely amazing. My name is David Weigel. I am the Intuitive Planetarium Director at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. My name is Erin Nagelkirk, and I am the Visualization Manager at the Intuitive Planetarium. So I started out actually over in Space Camp, and then I heard we were opening a planetarium. So I was kind of going, ooh, me, 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 pick me. I started literally the day before the Intuitive Planetarium became a thing, and that was a lot. Not only do we have a new planetarium, we have a brand spanking new planetarium director. He just came two days ago, and what he's been able to do already, I'm astonished. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Huntsville, Albert David Weigel. One of the first things that I wanted to do was really focus on live and interactive programming where someone from the Space and Rocket Center can be the audience's personal tour guide to the universe on whatever topic at hand. And so our first live daily show, Our Place in Space, was born. My name is Phil Scrimshire. I am the Planetarium Operations and Presentation Manager here at the Intuitive Planetarium at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. I was friends with someone who worked at the Rocket Center who posted about presenter jobs on Facebook. They were primarily looking for actors at the time for this role. So I applied for it, I interviewed, and I was hired on started in April of 2019. In the first year of the Intuitive Planetarium, we absolutely had some very large events. Probably the one that was my favorite was hosting Dr. Nicola Fox for kind of a tour of heliophysics as explored by NASA. And this was really our, our first foray into showing that, you know, we could bring in a guest speaker of great caliber, tailor their content to this full dome environment as they can explore their work in a way that's just big, beautiful, immersive, and different. And there is the nice animation of the solar wind coming out and hitting the spacecraft. So we're fresh off of celebrating our first year anniversary and turn around and COVID hits. The U.S. Space and Rocket Center announcing today it will be closing, starting this evening at five o'clock out of an abundance of caution. So it required a significant shift of thinking. And so really the redirection came to online programming. Writing the script for that and having like my phone propped up on a tripod in my living room with a blank background just shooting that as best I could. Looking at that now, I, I go, I have learned a lot about being on camera. Out of my daughter's bedroom, in the evenings when we would be hosting Cocktails and Cosmos, we just started doing some live streams. Thank all of you for joining us this evening and uh, join me again next week, next Friday at 7 p.m. for something else awesome. Producing International Observe the Moon Night in 2020 in sponsorship from Marshall Space Flight Center's Planetary Programs Mission Office, was a joy and a little bit of a terror because here we are, we've done some really, you know, conversational off the cuff live streams. And now this is sort of a, a full on production of let's try to get a, a live stream together as best we can on the night of International Observe the Moon Night and give people a tour of the moon that they can access from anywhere in the world. A lot of it was looking at data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and seeing what data sets we have on the surface of the moon that are just kind of cool looking 
and that you can see from Earth fairly easily with either a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, or even better yet, your naked eye. That was our, our first high production value live stream and set us up for several more. And we actually did International Observe the Moon Night two years in a row after 2021 and 2022, both in collaboration with Marshall Space Flight Center. Coming out of COVID, we're really regaining our footing. We're staffing up. We're starting to, you know, bring guests in our doors, which was was fantastic to see people back and doing so in a safe fashion. My name is Brittany Kunder, and I'm a technical developer here at the Intuitive Planetarium at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. I do all sorts of work for the planetarium, mostly involving technical development of shows. 2022 was a very big year for us. 2022 is the year that James Webb Space Telescope is going to be beaming back its first images. We knew that we wanted to build a show all around the James Webb Space Telescope. So we started storyboarding ideas for what we could include in the show, highlighting Webb's engineering and its four primary science objectives, which are to study the early universe, galaxies over time, other worlds, and stellar life cycles. Lastly, of course, then we had to apply visuals to all of this. A lot of what I've learned in my time at the planetarium is actually how to make things cinematic. So that you not only learn something, but at the end of the day, we have a 67 foot beautiful dome. I want things to look gorgeous on here. Some of my favorite examples of things we've made are 3D kind of renderings of nebula. So we take a flat image from the James Webb Telescope and we kind of slice it into a whole bunch of different pieces and then layer it to make it 3D. And this is a show that is continually developed and updated too. We are able to get updates into the show often the same day that that data is released from the Webb Telescope. We've since sold it, licensed it to other planetariums around the country and the reception has been amazing. I think over 65,000 people have seen that show specifically in the last year or so. Other amazing memories. We were asked by the Southeastern Planetarium Association to host their annual conference. And it's a, a really special opportunity to share the Intuitive Planetarium with any guest who comes on our doors. But it's a particularly special opportunity to share this technology and capability with people in the planetarium field, but saving the best for last. Dr. Harrison Jack Schmidt joined us to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Apollo 17. We worked with him in advance to just sort of talk through how we might let him retrace his footsteps and tire prints on the surface of the moon in the Taurus Littrow Valley where they landed. My goodness, what a venue. <laughs> This is something new. But I remember walking in at one point and on our beautiful dome, there was a panorama of the lunar surface and there was an astronaut that was in the image and Harrison Schmidt just casually going, oh yeah, and that's just me bouncing across the moon's surface like it's just a Tuesday. Seeing me uh, run across the moon here, by the way, you can tell that I'm not even on the moon, right? My feet are above the surface. <laughs> Uh, I'm using a cross-country skiing technique, actually. <laughs> I think really the, the most fitting quote came from his wife at the end, Teresa Fitzgibbon, who took my arm at the end of the night and said, David, you know, I have listened to Jack talk about going to the moon for 50 years. She said, but tonight I got to go too. We, we need to come up with uh, some kind of an award for <laughs> what David did. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> I really appreciate the kind words, but I absolutely can't, can't take even most of the credit because the Intuitive Planetarium team is really what makes this possible in every way. And not just the Intuitive Planetarium team, but the entire U.S. Space and Rocket Center team. You know, that happened and it felt like, wow, you know, we, we, we've made it. We've made it. And this is, this is big time now. One of the big things that happened in 2023 is we purchased a portable planetarium so that 
when people can't get to us, we can try to go to them. First stop was the Paris Air Show in Paris, France. But not to be outdone, or maybe to be, we wanted to really extend our reach further. And so we again partnered with Marshall Space Flight Center and COSM to try to put on a program all about the OSIRIS-REx sample return mission. One of the coolest opportunities I've had is to be able to fly out to Salt Lake City during the OSIRIS-REx asteroid sample return and be in Salt Lake City presenting a show about the mission just the day before that sample dropped to the Utah desert. And that was a really incredible program to share because it was domecasted, so think live stream for planetariums, to about 20 different planetariums around the globe. And we were able to share visuals and content from the mission, including uh, guest appearances by the principal investigator, Dante Loretta, and project scientist Jason Dworkin, and a lot of other individuals from that mission as well, which was very exciting. What am I looking forward to in the future? We don't have time to talk about all the things I hope to come, but we want to be a leader in the planetarium community, and I, I think we're already moving in that direction. Something that I love that we do, and something that we will continue to do, and something that I hope we inspire others to do, is that we do entirely live and interactive programming here at the Intuitive Planetarium. Having that person who you can connect to, having that tour guide who can connect with you on these concepts and explain them to you in a way that is one, engaging, two, entertaining, and three, informative, is not just the way forward from an entertainment value, but the way forward from a learning perspective. So for the future, kind of continuing on what we've started currently, we still like to do live and interactive shows with cutting edge visuals from all the new telescopes and even the old ones as well. I think we can grow so much over these next few years. I mean, hopefully we'll be able to get some technology upgrades and expand our reach both in the community and globally as well. You know, we've, we've done so much and there's so much to be proud of and our team is better than I could ever even have hoped for. And it's a true joy to work with them all the time. But even with all of that, it really seems like we're only just getting started and there's, there's so much more fun to be had.